why are you running for Butte County District 3 Supervisor? Well, I've noticed in our area, and people have talked to me, there is so much trauma that our county and city has gone through in the last several years and so many challenges. And I really think there needs to be a fresh perspective in the Board of Supervisors and really allowing people to be heard. And I think that that is one thing that people have expressed, they don't feel heard, and we need to make sure that they are heard. There's a lot of pain that's going on and um, isolation. And I think that to move forward with the city and the county, we really need to listen to our constituents. And I believe that uh, this, the Board of County uh, Supervisors position is something that is public servant. We have to be public servants first. Mm -hmm. So that is why I'm running. And what is your relationship with the community? Well, I've been here since 1976. I started out as in Durham High School, and then I went to Chico State and um, I studied in microbiology and biochemistry, very much involved with the sciences. And then I also actually worked in the county um, uh, public health doing wells and actually helping um, finalize them and inspect them. So I'm very much involved with water. Um, then I got involved with the uh, College of Agriculture and so I worked at Chico State for the College of Agriculture for 10 years and then I got an opportunity to work in the physics department and so I've worked there for 23 years. But in that time frame, um, you know, doing master's level work and um, complex research projects with genetics and I have very much been involved with um, looking at data, analyzing that data and forming my decisions based on that data and I think that that's something that is a perspective in looking at an analyzing and forming policy based on that analysis. Mm -hmm. That is a good point. But I've also been, you know, I'm a mother, I'm a wife of 35 years, a mother of two and a grand grandchild, and um, done volunteer work in this area, uh, whether it was in schools with my kids were in, with math and science, because science is really hard for teachers to prep, and I understand that. And so I was always open to being able to help with that. And then also in my church for over 30 years, um, lecturing, teaching in various different capacities, pretty much whatever they asked me. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, so very rooted in this community. And also, you know, if you've got kids, you got to be in sports, <laughs> not necessarily, but I was involved with you know, training them from when they were teeny tiny all the way up through high school in terms of coaching. So, oh, what kind of sports? It was mainly soccer that I, although I'm a runner, <laughs> and, uh, getting a little harder now because knees affect you after a while, but definitely involved with sports. That's awesome. Well, what do you see the biggest challenges Butte County is facing? Well, I think that the, the, we need to make sure that people feel safe and prioritizing safety in this area. And I've been hearing from many people that they don't feel safe. And so one of the first things I'd like to do is host a forum for people to say, look, why are you feeling that? Pull in the police and the sheriff's department to let them hear, but also take these ideas from the community and present them in a collaborative way to the county and say, look, these are our issues and uh, what can we do in a collaborative um, means to help this? And in reality, we have really good police officers and sheriff's department, but they are underfunded. And so there's also, um, we need to really look at that, but there has to be changes too, um, in that there has to be multidisciplinary um, activities, especially because my second issue is of course, um, really reducing homelessness but in a dignified manner we have to do it with dignity mm -hmm. and that's why it's so important to have these multi um, task units because they have to be made up of mental health clinicians social workers health personnel and the police combined and because really what we want to do is we want to reduce it with dignity 
and treat people as individuals. It has to be in a dignified manner, not only for the individuals who are homeless, but also for the people of the community. And the only way that that's going to work is looking at this holistically and really bringing forth not only the county, the city, the nonprofit organizations, the um, faith-based organizations, pulling us all together and working towards this goal of really helping. Mm -hmm. We can't just pigeonhole people. That is not working. We need to come together and act as a community and move forward. Mm -hmm. It really does take a team, team effort. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that there has to be that collaboration. Mm -hmm. And again, District 3 is, a, is an interesting district because it primarily goes inside Chico's, it, it is totally inside Chico. And so there has to be collaboration between the county and the city and the facilities of the Butte County you know, Health Department mm -hmm. and uh, the behavioral health. It has to work as a team. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of goes on to my next question. In Chico, homelessness is a big issue. Um, so some of some of the solutions that you have to solve so to help solve homelessness, which you kind of touched on a little bit, collaboration, working as a team. And there has to be that element of dignity. There's not a single one of us who hasn't gone through some kind of trauma or anxiety or whatever it is. But if we don't look at the root causes of it, I mean, really, truly, there's, lot, there's no silver bullet. And so many people go, well, if you just do this, well, that's not, I don't believe that. Scientifically looking at the data, that doesn't bear out. So I can't not take my scientific background and apply it to this. And I think that that's an advantage. And in reality, um, we need, there's so many people that are experiencing substance abuse. You know, that doesn't make them a bad person. That means they're caught in an addiction. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We need to get, again, these personnel who can help them get the help that they need. Mm -hmm. And it does take an assessment team to do that. Mm -hmm. um, then there also is people who, people who are experiencing um, untreated mental health. That's been a problem for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sad to say that our state has not helped in this and so that's where we need really every citizen really throughout California and that's why I encourage people to talk to their families mm -hmm. and really open themselves up to really discussing this and say we need to talk about it throughout California and get our legislatures on the state level to recognize that we need solutions and those solutions have to be helping the actual symptoms not it, the, the actual ca root causes, not just deal with the symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so yes, housing is important, but that's, that's a band-aid. Mm -hmm. If you put people into a housing situation and don't treat their, whatever the root causes, that's not gonna help. Mm -hmm. But also we have to do it in a dignified manner in terms of, you know, and I know that the city is right now in the midst of, mm -hmm. you know, moving people out of their encampments and we have to respect not only the people who are in the encampments, but also the people of the town. They have put in a tremendous amount of effort, and this is nothing new. This, because I've been here for a long time, so I've been involved with, you know, part of my uh, uh, volunteer work was with feeding mm -hmm. and, and helping people get housing mm -hmm. in the capacity that I've been in. And so there has to be, again, that, we have to dignify the people and realize everybody's tax, our tax bases are funneling into this. Mm -hmm. So we need to really acknowledge the amazing work that the citizens of this uh, area and the county have, have done, mm -hmm. but also say, you know, these people need help. This isn't helping. And it's not being compassionate, mm -hmm. leaving them in the situation that they're in. It's a multifaceted. Very issue. multifaceted. And so all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there anything else you feel like is important to, to add? You know, we have an amazing county. And we have agriculture that is, basically agriculture is the primary uh, revenue generator in our county. And it makes our county one of the most beautiful places in California. 
I mean, who doesn't just kind of go, wow, when you see the orchards and you see the, the um, rice fields? It's amazing. And so we need to be supportive and um, protective of those agricultural uh, entities. It's very, very important. I don't know if people realize we have the richest soil in the world, the deepest topsoil in Butte in County. Butte County. We have a, an amazing gift, and also they're very good stewards of water, and we need to let, make sure that they have the control of that water that's in their purview. And um, the other aspect that I would like to touch on, and that's gonna take, again, coordination between the city and the county, and amazing grant writers, because gotta get it from the state, is fixing our roads. Mm. We have such an issue in this area but I'm somebody who's, you know, I care about budgets. I'm somebody who started off with nothing, and uh, I think budgets are important to, to, to um, stick with. Mm -hmm. And so these are my issues. And, but primarily, really being a voice for people. Mm -hmm. Listening to where they're at, acknowledging how they feel, and acting on that in a really a, a way that helps the policy, drives that policy. Mm -hmm. um, because if we don't know what our citizens think, yeah. what are we doing? That's true. And so that's my, that, that is really my core.